So, yo, so you kind of got an interesting backstory. Me and you did a, a, a YouTube, excuse me, an Instagram live a while ago, and we talked about how uh, you're from the streets of Detroit. You, you overcame a lot of the violence and the poverty mm. uh, in Detroit and transitioned into being an artist. So can let's just talk about that first part. Like, what was it like growing up in Detroit um, in, what, the late 90s, early 2000s? Mm -hmm. yep. And, and uh, losing friends and family to gun violence. Uh, and, and how did you transition to doing music? Really good question. So basically, for those who don't know my story, my mom had me when I was 15 years old. She got pregnant with me and decided to keep me, dropped out of high school to raise me. And then my grandma was battling a drug addiction. But her deciding to keep me actually, you know, like made her fight that addiction and like want to come clean. So she decided to, to, to take me in. And my mom dropped out of high school and tried to figure her life out. And then that already being as hard as it was, you know, four years later, my dad was shot 22 times as like collateral for like some street violence that was going on. So 20, I think that was 22 times. Yeah, it was like 22 times. And how old were you at this time? I was time? four. And the crazy thing is like Whoa. my my grandma told me that I knew this happened. She said she came home from work and I walked up to her and was like, hey, my, my dad is gone. He just got killed. And like, I don't remember that. But, hmm. you know, my grandma told me that it was something that happened. Goodness. So um, after that, it was like, you know, I think it was around the time the war on drugs hit the streets and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I was like a product of that. You know, you mm -hmm. talk about uh, mom having me at 15, losing my dad at four. Mm -hmm. It was almost like I was forced to be a product of my environment. Right. And I naturally had a soft heart. But the moment I walked up the street and went to the store, it was guys with guns on their waist. And mm -hmm. around that time in Detroit, people would ask what hood you was from. Mm -hmm. So instead of like, you know, gangs, mm -hmm. you know, bloods, crips and all that, it was like people were big on repping neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I said, I don't want to rep a neighborhood. And then people are like, well, you either going to get beat or join us or whatever. So yeah. I had to kind of like fight for respect. And then once I did that, um, people taught me how to make money. They taught me how to protect myself. And I didn't want to end up like my dad. And I wanted to break that cycle and provide for my mom. Mm. So yeah, that's how it eventually started for me. So this is... Early 2000s or late 90s? Uh, like 2000s, because I was born in 94. So, like, yeah, <laughs> two, early 2000s. And just to set, set some context, I guess, like, Detroit also was hit by a huge economic mm, recession yeah. uh, because of the uh, collapse of, what, General Motors and Ford yep, yep. and a lot of the jobs left. And yeah. so uh, it's it went bankrupt, right, around mm -hmm, that same yep. time. So you're talking about, like, dire. It's, it's not like the hoods in, in Cali. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, you're talking about, like, dire... Uh, just complete bottom of the barrel and just violence. And here you are, you lose your dad at four, which is like my son is five. I couldn't mm. imagine him yeah, yeah. growing up without me. Um, how did you get into making music? Like, how do you go from affiliated with street stuff, uh, losing your father to gun violence, to then um, getting into music? So basically, while my mom was young, she listened to everything that was hot on the streets and my aunts and everything. So I had um, two aunt or three aunt or two aunts and they listened to like 50 Cent, they listened to Tupac, they mm -hmm. listened to like Nelly, they listened to everything that was popping. Mm -hmm. And my aunt was listening to like No Limit Soldiers, Master P. So I would hear mystical rapping fast, da 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 da. And I'm like, yo, this sound cool. So um, I wanted to repeat it. So like I was, I think I was around like nine years old, I started repeating some of Mystical's lyrics. And then I um, always thought the cover art and all that looked cool. And I'm glad it was mystical um, and not Silk the Shocker. Ah, a little we bit wouldn't be helpful, having yeah. this interview with Silk the Shocker <laughs> as your favorite rapper. <laughs> so yeah, so I started repeating the lyrics and started adding my own at like nine years old. And mm. I was like, yo, I just made my own like lyric. I was just repeating the music, adding my own lyrics. And then that's when 50 Cent came out hard with the Get Rich or Die Get Trying. Get Rich or Die That was a moment. And, yes. And I was like, oh my gosh, I look up to this guy. If I had a father figure... Like, man, it, maybe it'll be this guy. He's hard. He's tough. He beat, mm -hmm. the, he beat the streets, and he can rap good. So I wanted to be just like that. Mm -hmm. So I started taking these lyrics and replacing the lyrics with my own. And then eventually, um, while everybody was going out and buying weed, I was taking, like, $5 and found a little trap house on the corner and was getting studio time with, like, $5 mm -hmm. that I got. Wow. Paid. And I was, like, maybe, like, 11, you know what I mean, 12 going to the studio on the corner and stuff like that, so. That's crazy. <laughs> so you were just hustling, scraping together your own money, going to the studio. And I think what makes your story unique is that one of the things we kind of connected on was that you ended up kind of having your first little bit of success as an artist in like the CCM world. Yeah. So can you talk about like who you toured with and how did that like kind of fall in place for you? Yeah. So what happened was 
my mom moved me out the streets and she moved me to the suburbs of Detroit, which is like, um, it's called uh, Taylor and it's like very like conservative. Like um, a lot of people come from like the South Tennessee. So it's like way different than what I was used to. Mm -hmm. But like, it was like a safer place for me to like um, kind of make mistakes and, mm -hmm. you know, get in trouble without getting killed or going to jail for it. So like, um, I'm out there and I kind of wanted to discover my spiritual journey. At that time, I had, you know, seen, you know, a lot of stuff happen. You know, people lost their life. And um, I mean, it was times where I hurt people and like, you know, I was arrested a couple of times and it was like a dark place where I had beef on the streets in Detroit. And it, just giving a little bit of context, but it was at a point where people were like looking for me like mm. actively and I was I was on planned defense like mm -hmm. when they come after me I'm gonna be ready mm. so I had a dark moment and I was like man I can't watch my life or look behind my back everywhere I go I'm like man I just wish that people can forget that they were looking for me mm. I wish I was like kind of a new person and I didn't know what that meant and I was like I just want to have a clean slate to be forgiven for everything all the people I've hurt and it was like man you know maybe they're maybe like there's this God or something that can forgive me I always heard about God but wasn't interested mm. you know um, so I had seen a lot of traditional churches and didn't want that, but I was like, I knew I needed something fresh. Yeah. So I'm already kicked out of school for 180, uh, 100, the whole school year I got kicked out of school for some really, <laughs> for some stuff I did. And, um, around that time I started going to this, uh, this church because I found these little comic books and it was like, you know, uh, Jesus died to forgive you for your sins yeah. and all this stuff. And I'm like, let me let me experience little this. Bi little Bible tracks. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I just yeah, need yeah. forgiveness. I'm yeah. like, I ain't trying to be in a suit. I ain't trying to do nothing. I just yeah. need the forgiveness aspect. Yeah. And um, at the be back of the comic book, you know, I prayed for the forgiveness, and it was. Like, I think it's amazing that you call it a comic book, by the way. It That's was. Great. It was like a little comic book. <laughs> it was like a little colorful comic book. It said, "Find a local church." Boom. So I, mm -hmm. I found a, the closest church I could. Go to that. That didn't work out. Um, and then found another church, and they were very like rock and roll, like skinny jeans and long hair, and um, they were playing this rock music, and it was like covering Hillsong, Young and Free, and they mm -hmm. had this crazy production system. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a dude who wants to rap, and I come in and see hundreds of kids at this youth group throwing their hands up, jumping off stages, mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. So the dude would walk up to me who's a lead singer, like, I hear you can rap. Mm -hmm. Man, you want to start rapping for our youth group? I said, man, y'all got like 300 kids going nuts. Like, of course mm -hmm. I would want to be on stage. Mm -hmm. And he got to know me, got to know where I was at, and uh, was like, yeah, man, let me mentor you and disciple you, whatever mm -hmm. that meant at the time. And then he pulled me in. Next thing you know, I'm rapping on stage at this youth group. A couple years later, um, the pastor of this church was like, um, my brother had a deal with Sony and Capital mm -hmm. uh, through a band named Bliss 66. And eventually, like, you know, lost the deal and all that, but had all the resources. So they basically was like, we want to take this youth group band because it was attracting all these kids from the suburb I was in. Mm. And he was like, I want to put y'all on the radio. And I got a lot of connections. Next thing you know, we're working with one of Eminem's engineers and we're on the radio now. And mm. we started touring all across the country. And that's when I became friends with the Newsboys and started playing, you know, some of their headlining shows with 20,000 people, 30,000 people. Um, Crazy. And yeah, but I've toured with like almost all the top Christian artists, you know, um, since I was like a teenager, so.